Did you know that only an hour off the coast of California you can actually kayak through sea caves? This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, so when Channel Island Adventure Company invited me and a friend to come out and experience it, I jumped at the chance. We spent one full day on the island and I wanted to share the entire itinerary in case you wanted to do it as well. Here's all the information on this amazing adventure you can have in California's Channel Islands. Let's jump into it. Today I'm meeting up with my friend Kirby and we're heading over to Santa Cruz Island to do some kayaking, which is something I've always wanted to do. We started the day by arriving at Island Packers in Ventura and checking in for our tour. Since we booked it through the kayaking company, we actually checked in with them and they gave us the tickets for the boat. Island Packers will remind you of this, but be sure to call the morning of your tour just to see how the waves are and to make sure the boat's still going out. We left right at 8am and it's about an hour and 15 minutes right out to Santa Cruz. Sometimes the boat does stop at Anacapa before so it can take a little bit longer but today we just went straight to Santa Cruz. Heading out to Channel Islands. It was a pretty gloomy day as we left the harbor but luckily the water was pretty flat, almost like glass. I've been out here many times and often it's pretty rough and this was the best I had ever seen it. If you get seasick I recommend sitting towards the back of the boat. It's the least bumpy back there. It was a relatively uneventful ride until we got about halfway and we stumbled on a massive pod of dolphin. There were hundreds of dolphins surrounding our boat and jumping in and out of the wake. Here's just a few of the best clips but it was a pretty incredible experience as you got to see them go under the boat, in front of the boat and even ride behind it. Things like this are what make Channel Islands such an amazing national park. There haven't been many times where I've taken the boat across and not seen some wildlife on the way. After stopping for about 10 minutes to see the dolphin, we made our way towards Santa Cruz Island and the island finally came into view. Unfortunately you couldn't see the full island because of the clouds, but this island is massive. Made it to the island. After arriving, we immediately met our tour guides who gave us an introduction to the island and walked us to the kayak staging area. Got our orientation and we're going out kayaking. I got more gear than I know what to do with, but ready to go kayaking. They provide you with wetsuits, helmets, life jackets, and paddle jackets. And once you get all your gear on, it's back to the beach for an orientation. And yes, the orientation shows you how to bend over for caves that you might not be able to enter if you're sitting up. About an hour after we landed on the island, we were finally able to set out on the kayaks. After everyone launched and got the basics of ocean kayaking from our guide, we set out east to hit some of the caves on that side first. Our guide Addison was fantastic and she went in each of the caves before us to make sure that they were safe before we went in. Our first surprise of the trip was stumbling on a bald eagle right above us. We sat there for about 10 minutes just watching it and talking about how bald eagles used to live here before the golden eagles and all the work they had to do to try to bring them back. Eventually it was time to enter our first sea cave and right off the bat this was an adventurous one. There were two ways to exit, either the way you came in or a narrow tunnel that you had to bend over to get through. Wow. This is so crazy. Every single one of these caves is optional so you don't have to go in if you don't want to. But I highly recommend going in, it's an incredibly fun adventure. That was intense. <laughs> The low tide and bird nesting kept us out of most of the caves on the east side, so we explored a few of the rocks off the coast and learned more about Santa Cruz history. There was one more tiny cave that we got to enter on the east side, and this one you basically had to take turns with the rest of the group, go in by yourself, make an 180 degree turn, and then come right back out. Just going in sea caves. That was cave number two. By this time we had been on the water for about an hour, so we kayaked about a mile back to where the ferry dropped us off and found a spot to hang out and have a snack. While we were having a snack, we got to ask questions and learn more about kayaking and about the island. 
These breaks make the kayaking trip approachable for those that haven't done much kayaking as well. After that, we headed around Elephant Rock to enter a few more sea caves. There was a lot more on the west side. Just bring a friend who paddles for you. <laughs> All right, straight through. This was probably the most narrow cave we did on our entire trip as we had to go in a small opening, make a complete turn, and then go back out another small opening. Plus there was rocks overhanging that you had to try to miss as well. It was a total blast. Leaving the smallest cave we had entered, it was about a 10 minute paddle to get to the largest cave we did on our trip. This cave was especially cool as there was a few seals that were sitting on the beach just hanging out when we entered. I have to say, it did smell pretty bad in here though. There was only one sea cave left and luckily they saved the best for last. This cave was located right at the base of Cavern Point which we're going to hike to later in the video. Dang, look at that blowhole. This spot was called Cavern's Cave and it started out relatively big as we made our way in about 250 feet. This is so insane, we're at our last cave and it looks like that. So cool. Once there, we waited for our guide to go further into the cave into a section that's completely dark and to see if it was passable. Luckily for us, it was passable and we were able to go one group at a time into this dark horseshoe in the back of the cave. I've never done anything like this before in my life and it was exhilarating to go through the dark with just the light from the guide's flashlight guiding us through the area. Adding to the adventure, there was a big right bend that you had to navigate once you got to the back. Everybody in the group made it through and everybody was super wow. hyped after this cave. That was an adventure. On the way out, we decided we needed to stop by the blowhole as well. Uh, that was one of the coolest things I've done in a long time going through that cave. What do you think, so Kirby? So epic, so <laughs> awesome. Two thumbs up. After exploring that fantastic cave, we started the paddle back to the pier. Luckily, the guide let us use our skills to run one of the small arches before docking. In total, we were out for about three hours and we did two to three miles of kayaking. We made it back from our kayaking adventure and we got about two hours before we got to get back on the boat. So, I need to change out all this and go do a little bit of hiking. All right, so we got two hours left. I'm gonna go explore Cavern Point. Kirby went and did a more intense hike because he wanted to rush and see some stuff. But I'm excited to explore the island a little bit more. If you've never been to Santa Cruz Island, then your first stop should definitely be the campground, so hopefully you can see the cute island foxes. These island foxes are about the size of a normal house cat and they're found on six of the eight channel islands. Each of the islands have its own subspecies of the fox and these foxes are found nowhere else on earth. These guys have no real predators on the island, so they're not afraid of you or anything else. Basically, they're always walking through the campground trying to find scraps of food that have been left behind that they can eat. I was really hoping to see some of the island foxes, so now that I checked that off, I'm hiking up to Cavern Point. The hike up to Cavern Point is about a mile and a half round trip, and it's a great option if you only have a few hours on the island. The hike is relatively uneventful in the beginning as it leaves from the campground and it basically just hikes up a small hill. Once you get to the top of the hill, the trail splits and one way goes to Potato Harbor and the other to Cavern Point. If you have enough time, go out to Potato Harbor, but it's about five miles round trip. So if you're short on time, Cavern Point is the best option. After proceeding up another small but steep hill, the views across the coastline start to break out in front of you. It's too windy to say anything, but can you believe how amazing this is? Right when I crossed the top of the hill, I was greeted with one of the coolest views I've seen on Channel Islands, and that was this little island fox walking up the path with the coastline behind him. He then went and started walking along the bluffs, and I hope he's okay. 
As I made the final push to Cavern Point, I couldn't help but look down on the area we had been kayaking just a few hours earlier. It was crazy to see how small of a portion we actually saw of the coastline of Santa Cruz Island, and I can't imagine how many thousands of caves there are. Also, it wasn't the best day to see across the island or across the water back to the mainland, but it was still an incredibly beautiful place. This island is seriously amazing. If you've never spent any time here, remedy that. Come to Santa Cruz Island. It's beautiful. By the time I was coming down from Cavern Point, it was about time to head back towards the boat. This was a beautiful time to be on the island as there was a lot of wildflowers. I saw some purple and a lot of yellow. Look at how tall these flowers are. I'm 6'3 and they're two feet above me. <laughs> if you still have time to kill before the boat gets there, you can see the small visitor center. In here, there's a few information plaques about the island and you can get your national park stamp if you're interested. Alternatively, there's a lot of ranching relics and antiques along the main road that you can walk around and see as well. After that, it was back to the dock to wait for the boat to arrive. Also, be sure you're on time for that last boat of the day as you don't want to spend the night on the island. I know someone who had to do that and that's a story for a different video. And with that, our time at Channel Islands National Park is done. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments. We'll see you on the next one. Also, I hope you get lucky like my friend Kirby did on the way back to see these amazing whale views.